Slightly hidden among the other news this month, you may have missed the story that North Macedonia officially became the 30th member of NATO on February 27, 2020. North Macedonia has long been aspiring for a greater presence in international institutions, but one thing was holding it back, its old name of Macedonia. This is the story of how Macedonia was pressured into changing its name to North Macedonia. The North Macedonia name debate is a saga that has its roots back in 168 BC. That's right, this starts 2000 years ago. And, like all good things, it also starts with the Romans. In 168 BC, the Romans had just finished conquering Greece. After clearing up all the rubble, they set out to do their favorite pastime, splitting up their new possessions into new administrative regions. Earlier, the Romans had conquered a bunch of territories located geographically above Greece, including the ancient kingdoms of Macedon and Paeonia. The Romans decided to combine these regions into a new province, which was then lumped into the existing state of Greece. They decided to call the new Greek province Macedonia. This arrangement survived for about 500 years, until the 4th century, when the Romans decided to split it up into two regions. A lower part, called First Macedonia, covered an area which corresponds to the location of the modern Greek province of Macedonia. The upper part, which the Romans creatively called Second Macedonia, covered an area which is roughly where modern North Macedonia and southeastern Bulgaria are nowadays. This is how we got two different regions who both think they have a legitimate claim to the name of Macedonia. The next 1500 years of North Macedonian history are extremely tumultuous. By the 6th century, modern North Macedonia was part of the Slavic Byzantine Empire. Over the next 1500 years, its names, borders, and demographic makeup was changed numerous times. By the start of the 20th century, the modern region of North Macedonia was a province called Rumelia in the Ottoman Empire. After a failed revolution and two Balkan Wars, modern North Macedonia emerged in 1946 as the People's Republic of Macedonia and was part of the newly created Communist Federal People's Republic of Yugoslavia. Greece, in the 1940s, was not too happy about another state taking the name of Macedonia. Viewing the name as having strong historical ties to ancient Greece and Greek history, the Greeks were especially annoyed that a demographically non-Greek population was claiming this name. But, at that point in time, Greece was too preoccupied with other domestic and foreign issues to care too much about this issue. However, in 1991, the Republic of Macedonia officially declared independence from Yugoslavia and set about to become a democratic state and part of the international community under the name of Macedonia, which they had called themselves now for centuries. Greek was, again, not happy, but this time they set about to keep the name Macedonia Greek, and they had some power to actually accomplish this desire. To become a new country in the modern international community, the basic requirement is international recognition. Basically, the majority of the international community had to recognize Macedonia as an independent country, but Greece set about to delay the international recognition of Macedonia as long as possible. Greece took a bunch of measures to accomplish this. First, many Greek communities in other countries lobbied their governments not to recognize Macedonia. The American Greek community, for instance, placed full-page newspaper ads, while the Australian Greek community somehow managed to organize a 100,000-person protest march in Melbourne. Next, Greece itself threatened to use whatever veto powers and legal instruments available to block Macedonia from joining any international institutions such as the EU, NATO, the IMF, and others. Overall, the international community was actually fairly neutral on this issue. Most states realized that Greece thought the name was offensive to their history, but most states also realized that Macedonia needed to be able to participate in international institutions and the international community. So, in the early 90s, many international institutions, such as the UN and the World Bank, adopted the acronym FIROM, standing for the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, as a name they would use, for the time being, to refer to Macedonia. By the way, FIROM is probably my favorite acronym. It just flows so nicely when you say it. The FIROM name solved the issue of Macedonia joining a lot of international institutions, like the UN, 
and it also allowed it to become internationally recognized as a country. But in many regional institutions that Macedonia wanted to join, such as NATO and the European Union, Greece still had the ability to veto any new members and was continuing to threaten to use this power if a country named Macedonia ever tried to join. Additionally, the term firearm was stressed to only be a temporary solution until this debate was solved. Moreover, Greece was kind of strong-armed into accepting the term firearm because the other European states were actually getting pretty annoyed by their opposition of Macedonia on what they saw as a fairly trivial matter. This led to a sort of stalemate emerging, which continued throughout the 2000s. What is amazing, though, is that Firearm and Greece developed fairly close economic and political relations during this time, becoming important trading partners despite the looming name debate. The reason this debate lasted so long was because both sides stubbornly defended their own positions. For Greeks, the adoption of such a historically Greek name by a distinctly non-Greek society was deeply offensive. But Macedonians felt that because they had been calling themselves Macedonian for such a long time, they were entitled to choose this name to represent themselves. The Macedonians also felt that because they were a sovereign state, they should be able to choose any name they want to represent themselves. Slowly, this debate got reopened in the mid-2000s. Macedonia had a legitimate interest in joining NATO and the EU. Eventually, Greece admitted it had no problem with Macedonia joining the EU institution. They just needed to be called a different name. So, the hunt for a new name began. Greece, in the late 2000s, was beginning to be open to a composite name for Macedonia, of which one part would include Macedonia. Eventually, Greek decided that it was okay with the name New Macedonia. Macedonia itself was lukewarm on this proposition, so no real action was taken, but the negotiation tables were open. However, relations between the two nations took a turn for the worse when, in 2008, Greece spearheaded NATO giving Macedonia an official non-invitation to join the organization on the basis of the name dispute. This basically meant that until the name dispute between Greece and Macedonia was settled, Macedonia would not be welcome to join NATO. Macedonia was not happy with this decision. In fact, it was so annoyed at the Greek actions that it decided to adopt the policy of antiquization. This policy had Macedonia putting a large emphasis on their ancient history, making statues and renaming streets and buildings after key historical figures such as Alexander the Great. But these figures had been historically claimed by Greece, and Greece got pretty mad because they considered these figures to be vital parts of their own history. In the end, it was perceived by many to be a pretty petty action on Macedonia's behalf. Despite these actions, negotiations on renaming Macedonia were actually progressing. In 2014, both Greece and Macedonia agreed that Macedonia could add a geographic term to its name. In 2017, Macedonia elected a new prime minister who had promised to bring an end to the naming dispute. Under him, both Greece and Macedonia started negotiating intensely throughout 2018. Additionally, in 2018, Macedonia agreed to stop its policy of antiquization and even renamed a lot of buildings and streets as a sign of good faith. Greece began to allow greater Macedonian involvement in international organizations. Finally, on June 12, 2018, it was announced that an agreement had been reached between Greece and Macedonia. Called the Prespa Agreement after a lake on their shared border, this agreement stated that Macedonia would from now on be known as North Macedonia. Additionally, this agreement stated that the history of Greek Macedonia and North Macedonia were different. North Macedonia held a referendum on this agreement and 91% of voters voted in favor. Thus, on January the 11th, 2019, Macedonia officially became North Macedonia. Since then, relations between North Macedonia and Greece have been, quite honestly, great. North Macedonia also flew through the NATO accession process, officially joining the alliance as its 30th member on the 27th of March in 2020. But there is a sad note to end on. The last major institution that North Macedonia desperately wants to join is the European Union. Doing so would be very economically and socially advantageous for the small state. In the past, 
Greece had blocked Macedonia from joining, but now following the name change, they support North Macedonia joining. So what gives? In fact, North Macedonia's entry was put forth to the European Union in October 2019. Unexpectedly, the center was France. Every so often, France goes through a period where they act really uncooperative or stubborn in international politics. In late 2019, France was going through one of those phases. This time, they were complaining about how expanding many of the institutions that they were part of was only increasing the costs on France. As such, they didn't want anyone else joining the EU. Despite pressure from allies such as Germany, France refused to change their stance and North Macedonia was not allowed, for the time being, to join the EU. After this decision, most EU members openly admitted they felt pretty bad for North Macedonia. The country had been so compliant with EU demands, so much so that it even changed their name. But then they didn't get the promised reward, just because France was, quite honestly, being a dick. But sometimes that's just how the world is. Perhaps in the near future, France's stance may change, and North Macedonia may hopefully be allowed to join the EU. In the end, the North Macedonia name dispute is an interesting example of how the perceptions that states hold can have serious implications on international policy. In no rational world should Greece have had such a problem with Macedonia's name choice. The only thing it offended was their own perceptions of their history. It in no way threatened Greek physical or economic security. Yet, the threat to Greece's perception of their own past was in fact enough to motivate them to cause a North Macedonian state over two decades worth of headaches. I find that this case is a great illustration of how culture and history is often more important than we think in international relations.